and welcome back. In this module, we're going to be looking at the radar chart. Now, the radar chart may also be known as a web chart, a spider chart, or a star chart. You may have heard of it known as any one of those things in the past. Basically, the idea of the radar chart is you have multiple categories of data that you want to look at, and you want to view different metrics on top of those categories. So as you see on the right-hand side, I have different departments within inside of an organization, and then I have different metrics that I'm trying to analyze on top of that. Now you can have one or two or even multiple metrics that you place on top of a radar chart that allow you to be able to see the performance of each of those categories and how do those different metrics compare to each other because they're overlaid on top of each other just like you see in the chart on the right hand side. Now the radar chart is actually published by Microsoft and so let's go ahead and get a look at how to use it and of course how to download it where you would find it from the library. All right, so you found how to get to the Visuals Power BI Gallery in the past. If you go to visuals.powerbi.com, that'll take you to the gallery that we're looking at right now. On the very bottom, you'll find the radar chart. And if you expand the radar chart, you can download the visual locally and then make it part of your own visualizations. You can also download, download the sample files from here as well to show you how to use it. Once you've downloaded it, you can go back over to your Power BI desktop instance here, which I have already opened. And we're going to start by going ahead to bring in some data. And once we bring in that data, we'll overlay it on top of the radar chart. All right, first things first, we're going to get started by coming up to the Get Data section here. And we're going to be pulling in some data from Excel this time. So I'll select Excel. And once I've selected the Excel file, I'm going to go find the location where I have my source data, which for me is going to be in my C drive underneath this custom uh, data sets folder here. And you'll actually be able to use this data set that I'm using as well. You'll find it at the bottom of this post where you can actually download the same data set that I'm using. We're going to be using this wedding budget Excel file. So I'll select the wedding budget file. Go ahead and double click on that to open it and import the data. It'll then prompt me in the navigator pane to choose which one of the spreadsheets from that workbook I'd like to use. Well, in this case, there's only one. So I'll select expenses here. And you can see the type of data that we're looking at. This is wedding expenses and the kind of budget that we had for our wedding. Kind of fun data, I guess. And we could choose either to edit this and take it into the query editor, or in this case, the data looks like it's already in fine shape, so I'll select load to bring it into the data model. Again, if you're curious more about what a data model is, I suggest that you take a look at our traditional Power BI course, which covers that in depth. Now I can find here that I've now that I've got the data in, I can see those fields showing up on the right-hand side. So my next step then is to go ahead and bring in and import the custom visual. I can find that custom visual by going to the ellipsis here. I'll select the little ellipsis to import from a file. And then I'll choose to go ahead and import that custom visual. Now the visualization that we're going to choose from I have in my custom library. You should have just downloaded it from the library that we looked at a moment ago, but it's called Radar Chart. So look for Radar Chart, select it, and hit Open. Now we've imported in that into our custom library. Really, it's showing up as part of our native library now once I hit OK, and you can see it appear here and show as a radar chart. So I'll select the radar chart to place it into our visualization section here. I'll go ahead and make that a little larger so we can see at a full length section here what this is going to look like. And so we'll start to bring in some data. So I'll start by bringing in just a few fields here. We'll start by bringing in the categories. So I'll select the categories. Oop, let me make sure I have the chart still selected there. You have to have the chart selected to add data to it. So let me select that chart and add in a category. You can see each of the categories of our wedding budget showing up in here. And then I could add in, let's say, the actuals so I can actually see where most of our payments have gone to and what, where most of our money has gone to. It looks like other expenses is eating up most of our money right now. Now, I mentioned earlier that uh, radar charts are good at showing multiple metrics on top of each other. You can overlay multiple metrics here. And so if I were to add in something like a budget so I can compare the actual to budget, you can see them overlaid on top of each other. And you can see where we are way over budget on this other expenses area but we're way under budget when it comes to the apparel. Maybe we got some deal on a dress and we got a pretty uh, cheap wedding dress here rather than having to spend a lot of money. But we did overspend also on the gifts, maybe the gifts that we had for the groomsmen and the, uh, the, the bridesmaids. We spent too much money on that. So we're able to see overlaying these fields on top of each other, the different metrics and how they compare to each other. You can have more than two, of course. I could add in variants in here, which may not make as much sense, but just so you can see what it look like, looks like to have more than uh, two, you can add another one in there. You can see variants in there as well. All right, so what I'd like to do, I'm going to take variants out for a moment. What I'd like to do, though, is show you some of the customizations you can do inside of the radar chart. And anytime we want to go customize a visualization or add modifications to a visualization, you'll come over to where the paintbrush is here. So I'll select the paintbrush, and I'll change a few things. Let's say, for example, I want to add in data labels. So I can turn on data labels here. You can see the on button needs to be flipped on, and you can see those data labels now appear here. 
You can also increase the size of those data labels if I expand the data label section and increase the text size here, maybe a couple notches up, so that way it's a little easier to read. You can also change the, the font color. If you don't like the gray color that's used right now, I could change it to a more of a pure black, so it's a little easier to read whenever we have black on black here. Okay, So the black of the radar section there, and then the black of the text. I could also change the colors. If I don't like the black and the blue that's being used right now for the different sections, I could change the colors by coming up here where you see data colors. And when I select data colors, I can tell it how do I want to show actuals and how do I want to show budget here. So let's say that I want to actually change actual rather than showing as a blue. Let's get some kind of an orange in here maybe, maybe an orange that looks like this. And then I'll change budget. Let's see budget in here as some sort of a blue. Okay, so I can see a comparison between the two here. I'm just playing around with the colors to show you the kind of things you can do in here. Now when you hover above either one of those sections or categories, uh, I should say metric is really what it is, it does highlight that section, focuses in on that area. So depending on what you have selected, it'll focus in on that particular metric. All right, so let's see what else we can do. Some other things that we can do, we can play around with the actual legend if we wanted to. You'll see there's a legend property that if I expand that, I can tell it where do I want my legend to appear. This is the legend up in the top left right now. I could say, well, I want to position the legend up in the top center section so you can see it's moved up to the middle. And I may also want to bump up the text size on that a couple notches so that way it's a little easier to read. And so you can do that very easily here. All right, what else we can do? Let's go up a little bit more. Let's see uh, some of the other properties that you're probably used to seeing. You could add a border around the visualization here. So I can add a border. And as I shrink this down, you can see the border takes up a certain section of the visualization side here. Okay, so that's a border. You've seen those before. I'll turn that off. You could also do things like change the size just by typing in values rather than dragging a anchor. You could actually kind of resize things by typing in a value. I could also lock the aspect ratio, basically what that does, we've explained that in previous sections, that as I change the size of this, it keeps the buffer that I have on either side, the white space, stays the same. So that's locking the ratio, the aspect ratio here. And then of course if I wanted to, I could add in a background color, some kind of background to this. If I wanted to, I can add in a color, make it a little transparent, because it makes it a little pop a little bit depending on what kind of color you choose. I'm going to revert that back to the default though. And then finally, the title section, if I want to add any kind of section uh, customizations to the title, maybe increasing the text size, I can do that so it's a little easier to read. Maybe I want to center it off here just like I have the legend, you can do that as well. So that's the radar chart, it gives you a good view of what you can do. Now you can of course have multiple categories, you can add categories, make fewer categories. Uh, you don't want to get too many, once you get up into like the 15 or 20 range of different categories here, it gets a little hairy, a little messy to look at, so be aware of that. But any uh, categories within the range like we have here should look great. And then you can have multiple metrics that you lay on top of each other like we've done here as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Look forward to the next custom visual that we look at together.